Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, let's discuss an important fluid property today. Uh, I hope you have watched my thumbnail, right? So, what did you observe on my thumbnail? You found the name surface tension along with you found some bubbles, right? So, right, they are actually soap bubbles which are having a liquid amount very much less. I mean, the mass of liquid very much less inside. And uh, have you ever thought why these bubbles are round in shape? Similarly, if you observe another example I can quote you is uh, the ant. Ants are able to walk on water very easily when we cannot. Some insects and some ants, they can walk how? And even if you take a leaf, lotus leaf especially, you can find the droplets taking a circular manner or taking a bubble manner on it how and uh, even a needle is trying to float on water how this is all because of surface tension okay so surface tension is nothing but the tensile force which acts in between a liquid and a gas or else in between two immiscible liquids let me talk about the first definition Tensile force acting between a liquid and a gas. As I've told you, if you observe the thumbnail, you had the bubble, whereas that bubble is a liquid bubble which is in contact with air. Same example like your, uh, what do you call, uh, leaf, leaf and uh, droplet of water on the leaf. Correct? That's, an uh, that's a surface tension. Similarly, if I quote the second uh, definition, it's a tensile force which occurs in between two immiscible liquids. Like I was telling, ant is able to walk on the water. So the legs of the ants is subject is having some uh, uh, what do you call uh, chemical or what you call rather some uh, uh, oil like uh, liquid attached to its legs. So that liquid and the water are immiscible. Means they are not. The word immiscible means they are not insoluble in each other. I mean they are not able to dissolve in each other so this chemical which is to the insect leg or the ant leg the greasy like chemical and the water are not soluble in each other so hence they become two immiscible liquids and hence there is surface tension force and which is making the insect to move but whereas we don't have that chemical to our feet hence we can't walk on the water and I was telling you another example needle is floating on water needle can float on water when you try to put some oil inside the liquid that's your water so that now oil and water cannot dissolve in each other and then your needle can float right this is all about surface tension uh, surface tension is denoted by the Greek symbol Sigma and uh, it is expressed as Newton per meter as I've told you it's the tensile force acting on the surface so we assume it as tensile force acting per unit length or with respect to length on the surface means it is along the length so it is Newton per meter in SI system and in IT system it is kilogram force per meter okay. and if you consider centric unit it will be dyne dyne per centimeter I'll explain you the phenomenon of surface tension according to fluid mechanics maybe this will be useful for you in your competitive exams right before going yeah see this diagram first so I have a complete mass of water let's assume it's water for timing I have complete mass of water and in this this mass of water is open to atmosphere now I am considering three molecules in this entire mass one molecule which is X which is completely submerged inside next second molecule Y in which three fourth 3 by 4th portion of the molecule is inside the water and 1 4th is open to the atmosphere and I have the third molecule Z which is exactly half open to the atmosphere and half inside the liquid okay now when you consider these three molecules what can you observe molecule X is equally attracted in all directions by the water molecules This molecule Y, even though one fourth of the part is open to 
atmosphere or air molecules since major part of the molecules is inside the water the resultant of this molecule y will be always acting downward why because there is more uh, attraction in the downward direction means it is more part is submerged in water right so more part of the attraction will be downward so resultant will act downward in case of molecule x resultant will be zero why because it's completely balanced in all directions but observe molecule z what is happening half of the molecule is open to atmosphere half of the molecule is uh, inside the liquid so now this molecule z is exactly half in contact with the air correct so all such molecules like z behave like a elastic membrane okay that's how a tensile force and they are under tensile force that's only where surface tension comes into action okay now i'll just explain the same process here three molecules we are considering molecule x is attracted in all directions hence resultant is zero molecule y is situated near the free surface but still major part of it is inside the water hence the resultant will be downward but molecule z is situated on the free surface exactly half of it is in the water half of it is open to atmosphere then the free surface acts as a very thin film under tension so that's how, how we can be able to work means on this thin film like uh, which is under tension how the bubble is forming in a round shape is due to this surface tension surface tension the tensile force will act which acts as the side of the surface now let's calculate what's the surface tension on a liquid droplet so for this i'm considering a small spherical droplet of liquid means it's completely full of water something like a water bubble okay or water droplet it's completely full with water now what i'm doing is i'm trying to cut the water droplet exactly into two halves okay so what is happening inside the droplet what is there water is there so there is complete mass of water inside this water will try to come out it will exert some pressure on the walls of the droplet so hence there is pressure force acting over the entire area of the droplet and if you observe the outer surface of your droplet it is in contact with air hence there is surface tension force acting and this surface tension force always acts along the perimeter okay so sigma is surface tension p is pressure intensity d is the diameter of the droplet now what was i told you the first pressure pressure force acting on the area of the droplet how this came since because the uh, inside of the droplet is completely filled with water that water will try to exert pressure on the boundary or the what do you call the uh, border of the or this wall of the droplet it want to come out it will start exerting pressure that's pressure force and completely the bubble is filled inside with water right the droplet is filled with water so it's occupied over the entire area so pressure force is given as pressure intensity into area why because we have a formula pressure is equal to force by area so from there force will be pressure into area so p into area of the droplet is how much i told you diameter of the droplet is d so area of the droplet will be pi by 4 d square so p into pi by 4 d square next i have told there is another force called surface tensile force or surface tension force why because the outer periphery of the droplet or the circumference of the droplet is in contact with air now so i told you when an air and a liquid comes into contact with each other we have surface tension so uh, surface tension what was i told you surface tension as sigma is equal to n by m right so when sigma is equal to n by m n stands for here tensile force tensile force acting along the surface n by m means tensile force acting along the surface it could be any surface it could be a linear flat horizontal surface or it could be a round surface any surface but ox acts all along the surface so when sigma is equal to tensile force by the surface along which it is acting so what will be the tensile force now sigma into the surface so sigma into now along which surface is the surface tension acting all along the geometry all along the periphery so into circumference circumference of circle formula is pi into d so that's how it's sigma into pi d so for that liquid droplet to be in equilibrium equate both the forces so your pi and pi will get cancel 1d 1d will get cancel so pressure intensity is given by the formula 4 sigma by d if you want to calculate surface tension sigma then that will be equal to remember this formula this will be very much useful for you in your competitive exam even though he uh, i mean sometimes they ask you the formula directly some 
Sometimes if they not ask you the formula, they will ask you what is the relation between uh, pressure and diameter in a liquid droplet with surface tension. Then P is inversely proportional to T. Like this you have to tell. And also they will ask what is the relation between surface tension and diameter. They are directly proportional. Let, let's calculate surface tension on a hollow bubble. So hollow bubble means like I have showed you on my thumbnail which is like a, a soap bubble. Okay very little amount of water or liquid is present inside the bubble most of the uh, inside inside of the bubble is filled with air only little part is water okay when if you try to blow out bubbles no you in exhibitions and in malls we try to blow out bubbles when that bubble will just collapse on your hand you can observe just a small little bit wetness that's all like that so little part is water major part is air inside the bubble only However, outside the bubble is always surrounded with air. So now, we assume, we neglect that little bit mass. So we assume for a soap bubble or a hollow bubble, both sides of the uh, geometry is in contact with air. So, the pressure force will be same is equal to 2 times sigma into pi d. Sigma into pi d is your tensile force, right? Since we are assuming both sides, we put 2 into sigma into pi d. So from here again, pi and pi will get cancelled. And uh, 1 diameter, 1 diameter will get cancelled. You will be having P equal to 8 sigma by D. If you remember here P equal to 4 sigma by D. Here it became twice 8 sigma by D. Here it was sigma equal to pi D by 4. Here it became sigma equal to pi D by 8. Like this you can see. Remember. Now let's see some problems related to this. So see the first question. Surface tension of water in contact with air is 0.0725 Newton per meter inside the droplet is 0 0.02 newton per centimeter square calculate diameter of the droplet so this is related to this first case liquid droplet case he is asking calculate the diameter of the droplet means you need to calculate d so d will be 4 sigma by p or else you can write yeah, d equal to 4 sigma by p so that's the formula we have 4 into sigma is already ready here 0 0.0725 by P. Here P is given in Newton per centimeter square. You have to convert in Newton per meter square. Just multiply it with 10 power 4. You will get the value of D. Next, find the surface tension of soap bubble. So this is related to soap bubble case. P equal to 8 sigma by D and sigma equal to PD by 8. These two formulas must come into your mind. Let's see what he is asking. He already gave you the diameter of the bubble. He is asking to calculate surface tension sigma with the value of P. So you need to take up this formula. PD by 8, so P is 2.5 Newton per meter square, it's already ready, so just put 2.5 into D, 40 mm, means convert into meters, 14 to 10 power minus 3 by 8, you'll get the value of sigma, so like this you need to solve the problems related to surface tension, okay, so hope you understood this video, and thank you.